Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I greatly appreciate it. Um, over the next hour, we'll listen to the findings of this report by Gordon with the Monitor. This presentation will explore key trends driving development and innovation in packaging and will seek to identify hotspots for packaging growth in all regions throughout the world. Gordon is an associate consultant at Euromonitor Chicago office. He's responsible for executing custom research projects for international clients. Since joining Euromonitor, Gordon has managed research in North America and Latin America across a variety of industries, including, but not limited to, consumer packaged goods, consumer finance, and industrial products. Prior to joining Euromonitor, Gordon worked as an independent consultant for a global textile company in Guatemala, focusing on operations performance improvement. Gordon has a Master's of International Business from Florida International University, as well as an MBA from INCAE Business School in Costa Rica. So just a quick couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. Everyone's phone is muted to keep the background noise at a minimum. If you have any questions at all throughout the entire presentation, please type them in the chat box, which is located on the left-hand corner of your screen, and they'll be answered at the end of your presentation. And at this point, I'd like to hand the webinar over to Gordon. Okay. Thank you, Paula, for that introduction. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so again, my name is Gordon Letcher, uh, consultant at Euromonitor International. Um, so as Paula kind of let you know, this afternoon I will be presenting our research on global trends in the packaging industry. Uh, and I think we have some very interesting trends and developments to call out during the presentation. Uh, so at Euromonitor, we cover volume sales of different pack types, uh, but one of our strengths is also understanding consumer trends. Uh, so as much as possible, I've weaved in qualitative factors uh, that are driving change in the global packaging landscape. So a little bit about Euromonitor. Uh, we are an international market research firm with 12 global offices. Uh, and part of the reason we are unique is that we have in-country analysts in over 80 countries uh, who help us understand the unique market conditions in these countries. Uh, so this, of course, allows us to get a sense of what is driving changes in packaging, for example, uh, across very diverse markets. Uh, and just to restate briefly, this presentation will explore key trends driving development and innovation in packaging, uh, and again, to seek out hotspots uh, for packaging growth in all regions. Uh, in terms of pack types we are looking at, the data used in this presentation includes only final consumer product packaging. So excluded from this presentation is data regarding shipping packaging or other non-final uh, consumer product packaging. And for definitions, uh, the primary packaging touches the product uh, and secondary faces the consumer. Uh, and all data presented in this presentation is retail unit volume in billions of units, uh, unless otherwise noted. And it also includes online purchases. Uh, and this presentation will look at six different regions uh, and focuses on packaging uh, in several key industries, including uh, packaging for beauty and personal care, beverages, uh, dog and cat food, home care, and packaged food. And the regions you see listed here are North America, Latin America, Western Europe, Asia Pacific, Eastern Europe, and Middle East and Africa. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the executive summary. Uh, and we'll look here at three key trends that are impacting the packaging industry um, to at least a certain degree in all regions. Uh, so the first one, consumer interest in health and wellness, uh, is driving growth in certain pack types um, that in turn is having a noteworthy impact on the volume sales of packaging associated with healthy products. Uh, so for instance, we see increased consumption of bottled water and yogurt products, uh, as well as decreased consumption of carbonates in many markets. Uh, these health and wellness related trends are changing the landscape of packaging. Uh, in addition, portion control uh, leading to many smaller pack types in packaged food and beverages is having an impact in many of the more developed markets. And also what we are seeing in many mature markets is the uh, importance of sustainable packaging. So in many regions, uh, maybe the developing markets like Africa not included, uh, consumers are becoming more aware of the packaging used for the products that they buy. Uh, this trend is particularly strong in Western Europe, but increasingly more in North America and major Asian markets uh, such as China and Japan. And finally, macroeconomic trends uh, will impact packaging in both 
developed and de developing markets. Uh, for instance, lightweight packaging uh, and larger pack size that provide consumers discounts for purchasing in bulk will be popular in countries where economies are struggling. Uh, so for example, in key South American and European countries. Uh, in addition, improving economic conditions in uh, developing markets as well as urbanization is boosting in industries such as uh, packaged food overall, uh, which will expand growth in associated pack types. So here we are looking from a global perspective the key product categories that are driving growth in packaging. Uh, the vertical axis here shows the absolute volume growth in the forecast period from 2015 to 2020. Uh, in this case, the volume is in billions. Uh, and the horizontal axis indicates the forecasted compound annual growth rate in the same period. And the size of the bubbles indicates the size of the category in 2015 in volume terms. Uh, so a recurring story in many regions is that bottled water will continue to be a dynamic performer. Uh, as will yogurt and sour milk drinks. Uh, this, of course, will boost performance of PET bottles, uh, thin-walled plastic containers, and also cartons for yogurt products. Uh, the growth rates in these uh, high-growth categories far surpasses the average regional growth rate uh, in most of the geographies we looked at, as we'll see here in this next slide. Uh, so this current map looks at the projected compound annual growth rates uh, in overall packaging across the different regions we looked at uh, throughout the study. What we see is modest overall growth uh, in most regions with healthier growth in developing uh, markets. Uh, so Middle East and Africa, as well as Asia Pacific, see stronger growth, um, as many countries are also growing from a lower base. In addition, uh, increased disposable income and urbanization rates uh, support the growth of key industries such as packaged food, uh, which will boost growth overall in developing markets. Key markets in Latin America continue to struggle with poor macroeconomic conditions, uh, which is also the case in some Western European countries and also Eastern Europe. Uh, in North America, which is dominated by the United States, uh, most industries are mature, and there is no significant growth in overall packaging projected. In the following slide, um, we are looking at a similar map, but are exploring data in terms of absolute volume growth of packaging across the different regions in the same forecast period. Uh, so here we see that in volume terms, Asia Pacific is by far the fastest growing region. Uh, due in large part to its immense population, uh, economic growth in major markets, uh, and high levels of urbanization, which is moving consumers to purchase more from formal channels rather than the common informal channels found in more rural locations in developing countries. So these previous slides provide a good high-level view of developments in packaging. Uh, but now what we'll do is move uh, forward looking at the regional perspective, uh, starting with North America. And for uh, basis of this presentation, North America includes the US and Canada. So Mexico is included in our Latin America regional analysis. Um, but before diving into the data, uh, some key themes in North America that are having an impact in packaging include uh, a resurgence of glass bottle packaging and beverages. Uh, so here we see that premium products uh, are driving growth in beverages um, as well as craft beers. Um, also, smaller pack sizes are doing well in North America. This is driven by health and wellness trends. Uh, so consumers are looking to smaller pack sizes as a form of portion control. Uh, also, these smaller sizes are more convenient and portable, uh, which go in line with the on-the-go lifestyle that many North Americans have. Uh, sustainability is also becoming more important for North American consumers, um, as they are even aware of 
whether their packaging is environmentally friendly, uh, not only whether their food was produced sustainably. So now moving into the data, uh, starting with a macro view. Uh, North America volume units sold of the industries covered for the study uh, totaled 529 billion units. The top three pack types, uh, which include PET bottles, flexible plastic, and metal beverage cans, account for nearly 60% of total units sold in 2015. As we see in the table at the bottom, North America is expected to grow at a modest rate in the forecast period, uh, achieving only a 0.8% uh, growth. Uh, this is due to economic conditions, as well as both markets being mat mature uh, consumer markets. In the historic period, uh, 2010 to 2015, PET bottles saw impressive growth, uh, mostly on the back of increased consumption of bottled water. And this trend uh, will continue into the forecast period, uh, as PET bottles expect a 2.6% CAGR uh, compound annual growth rate, which of course is higher than packaging in the region overall. Uh, this trend will be divergent when looking at uh, bottled water um, versus PET bottles for carbonates. So in North America, again, the consumer trend toward healthy lifestyles uh, is having a profound impact on the types of products being purchased. Um, so in conjunction with this trend, metal beverage cans uh, will see negative performance in the forecast period, uh, projected at a negative 0.7% CAGR. Uh, included in the others category, uh, plastic pouches, uh, a subcategory within stand-up pouches, uh, whose examples we see here, uh, will grow at one of the fastest rates among the more developed pack types, uh, projecting a nearly 6% growth rate and nearly 2 billion additional units sold. Uh, and driving this growth are confectionery products, uh, nuts, seeds, and mixes, and processed or dried fruit products. Uh, plastic pouches uh, also align with consumers' demand for convenient pack types uh, that offer portion control uh, and that also fit consumers' on-the-go lifestyle. So this following slide looks at the most dynamic product categories um, that fall within the industries looked at. Uh, so the axis on the left shows absolute volume growth exhibited by the bar graphs, and the axis on the right is the forecasted uh, compound growth rate indicated by the blue dots. Uh, so not surprisingly, uh, bottled water is expected to have the highest growth in overall volume terms. However, dark beers, uh, which include many craft beer varieties, are expected to have uh, some of the most impressive growth rates uh, at over 7% annually. Uh, craft beers are largely packaged in glass bottles uh, as it supports their premium positioning compared to uh, the more traditional beer categories. Uh, now we break down packaging a little further looking at food packaging in North America. So here the key uh, pack types are flexible plastic, folding cartons, uh, and thin wall plastic containers. Uh, and just to clarify the double donut chart we are looking at, uh, the outer ring represents 2020 volume share, uh, whereas the inner ring represents 2015 volume share. So we can see here among the key pack types, uh, there won't be significant changes in the relative share of packaged food packaging. Yet in the others category, uh, pack types such as the stand-up pouches, uh, as well as PET bottles, will see accelerated growth. Again, convenient sizes, uh, multi-use, and the uh, on-the-go convenience within confectionery and processed fruit categories will support stand-up pouches. Also, a shift in consumption to alternative milk products uh, is growing share in PET bottles within dairy packaging. Uh, so consumers in the U.S. are consuming less traditional milk products, 
which is largely a factor of the changing demographics in the U.S., uh, resulting in low growth for HDPE bottles, uh, and also then important growth for PET bottles uh, that are commonly used in alternative milk products to display premium and unique positioning on the shelves. And this current slide explores drinking milk products in a little bit more detail. Uh, if we look at the call-out box in the top right, we see that other milk alternatives uh, are expected to grow by about one billion in value sales uh, in the forecast period. Again, these products are driving growth in PET bottles, um, but also shaped liquid cartons and gable top liquid cartons. The shaped liquid cartons benefit from their natural and environmental feel, uh, which is in line with the global trends uh, that we explored in the executive summary. Uh, PET bottles, on the other hand, uh, offer brands the opportunity to differentiate themselves on the sh shelves uh, to attract consumers with more developed labeling and product information. Moving forward, we take a look here at beverage packaging in North America. Uh, we see over 265 billion units sold uh, in 2015. And looking at the chart, we do see some changes in the uh, pack type share moving into the forecast period. Uh, most notably, PET bottles will gain share as metal beverage cans will lose relative share of the North America beverage packaging uh, market. Metal beverage cans will lose share mostly due to uh, glass bottles regaining share in key categories such as beer, um, but even premium carbonates. Uh, so consumers are moving to many premium and indulgent products uh, in categories such as beer, uh, carbonates, as well as juices. Uh, but among these products, craft beer is most responsible for the uh, shakeup in pack type share projected in the forecast period. Within beverage packaging, uh, a product category is seeing some interesting developments despite uh, modest growth overall is sports drinks. Um, so of course, PET bottles remain the standard in this product category as the color of the product is important for the consumer experience. Uh, but innovations by companies such as Gatorade are changing consumer expectations for sports drinks. Uh, there are more functional sports drinks that provide more tangible benefits to serious athletes entering the market. Uh, and this is creating impressive growth um, projected at over 8% annually in the forecast period of plastic pouches, uh, an example of which we see here in the slide. Uh, and these pouches, again, are convenient. Uh, they're easy to carry in gym bags, for example, and provide convenient um, single serving options to consumers. And then natural sports drinks are also entering the market, uh, often in liquid cartons. And as mentioned before, these cartons benefit um, from an environmentally sustainable perception among consumers. Uh, here we look at beauty and uh, personal care packaging in North America. Uh, what we see is a highly fragmented industry uh, in terms of pack types. Uh, and of course, beauty and personal care includes a broad variety uh, of product categories. As a common theme, PET bottles again uh, is projected to see substantial growth, uh, showing the highest growth uh, prospects in absolute volume terms. One of the benefits of PET uh, in the beauty and personal care um, industry is again the customer experience. Uh, where brands can showcase the uh, product inside 
cultivating a reputation of having a quality product. Uh, also along with the PET bottles, uh, metal aerosol cans are another category that will see impressive growth, uh, projecting a 9% compound annual growth rate in the forecast period. Uh, this is due to consumer demand uh, and increased sales of spray deodorants and body mists throughout North America. Uh, turning now to dog and cat food packaging, uh, we see an industry that is dominated by metal food cans. Uh, however, this will change moving into the future. Uh, a trend we are seeing in this industry is the humanization of pets, uh, which basically means that pets are being given more premium food options, uh, often natural and organic-based products. Um, and these products often have similar quality food uh, that the pet owner has even purchased for themselves. So these more premium pet foods uh, are often delivered in stand-up pouches, uh, particularly in wet dog and cat foods. And thin wall containers uh, will also see growth in the premium pet food segment, uh, which along with stand-up pouches uh, will capture share from metal food cans. Uh, in both cases, these emerging pack types have a more premium image in the eyes of consumers uh, when compared to the more traditional packages pack types such as metal cans. And then finally, wrapping up packaging uh, in North America, we'll take a look at the home care industry. In home care, we see PET bottles growing in share while HDPE bottles and folding cartons each declined. Uh, within the others category, on the uh, these donuts here to the right, uh, plastic pouches will see a strong 5% compound annual growth rate in the forecast period uh, due to uh, zip closures uh, presenting child-safe packaging options. This feature is a main driver away from uh, powder detergents being sold in folding cartons. Uh, and in addition, some brands are developing uh, refillable pack types for home care products, which will drive down costs for consumers uh, while also presenting them with more environmentally sustainable options. So this covers our insights for North America. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and jump right into uh, the insights for, for Latin America. Moving along here, um, in Latin America, we also explored some central themes. Uh, these central themes include uh, sustainability, losing ground to convenience in some of uh, Latin America's major markets. Uh, consumers are more concerned about minimizing costs versus, versus excuse me, purchasing sustainably packaged products. And this is largely a result of uh, poor economic performance in many of the key markets. And related to that, uh, declines in disposable incomes are making consumers more cost conscious. Uh, so this is driving consumers to purchase smaller pack sizes uh, for home care and other categories. And finally, we see lifestyle developments driving change in packaging. Uh, so trends towards urbanization, uh, smaller families, and health awareness are influencing the types of packaging consumers seek. So now looking at the macro view, uh, in Latin America, economic challenges in key markets such as uh, Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, uh, will lead to slow overall growth in the forecast period. Uh, nevertheless, these weak economic conditions should have an impact in packaging trends overall. 
uh, and looking at the macro numbers, uh, 456 billion units of uh, products in our research scope were sold in 2015. Uh, this number is expected to grow to 500 billion units uh, by 2020, representing a 1.8% uh, compound annual growth rate for the forecast period. Uh, flexible plastic will continue to be an important pack type in the forecast period, uh, driven by multi-pack and economy products. Uh, in markets such as Brazil and Mexico, consumers are shopping for the most economic options for the products that they buy, uh, and this is often packaged in flexible plastics. Interestingly, along with bulk sizes and multi-packs, uh, smaller pack sizes are also growing uh, due to overall reduced disposable income. Uh, and this divergent trend of pack sizes on opposite ends of the spectrum um, growing in countries with weak economic growth is actually seen uh, across many markets that we looked at throughout the study. Uh, so family size packaging as well as refillable packages will help support growth of PET bottles in the forecast period. Uh, and again, PET bottles will be one of the more dynamic pack types uh, in the Latin America region as well. And looking at the product categories growing in the region, uh, bottled water is by far the most dynamic in terms of absolute volume growth, uh, as well as the forecast growth rates. Uh, and still, still bottled water uh, specifically leads the overall category with a 5.3% um, CAGR in the forecast period and over 75% of the absolute volume growth. And in terms of absolute volume growth, uh, loggers are also doing well. Um, they continue to do well despite economic pressure, uh, also due to manufacturers exploring different pack sizes to appeal to consumers uh, with lower disposable incomes. Food packaging in Latin America will see a 1.5% compound annual growth rate in the forecast period. Flexible plastic uh, dominates food packaging in Latin America, uh, but we do see liquid cartons and thin wall plastic containers making gains in the region. Uh, like in North America, many Latin American consumers are living busier lifestyles, and many countries uh, are continuing to urbanize as well. Uh, so both factors promote more on-the-go snacking or even eating in the office, for example. Uh, this is requiring more uh, convenient pack types that com uh, consumers can take along with them throughout their hectic, hectic lifestyle. Um, we are also seeing health and wellness trends beginning to take hold in Latin America which is leading consumers to increase yogurt consumption, for example, uh, as a healthy snack alternative. And we anticipate an increase of 1.6 billion units uh, volume growth for thin wall plastic containers uh, as a result of this shift in consumer habits. So exploring yogurt and sour milk products a little further, uh, we see that thin-walled plastic containers will have the highest absolute value growth, whereas liquid cartons will see impressive future growth rates. Uh, shaped liquid cartons are extremely popular in the Argentinian market, uh, and as we see in other markets, uh, many regional trends are really driven um, by key markets at the country level, such as Argentina. Uh, so in some cases, changes in packaging is driven by individual countries. And specifically, uh, Brazil and Mexico are driving growth in the thin-walled plastic uh, containers for yogurt products.
And relative to other industries, uh, beverages in Latin America is set to see um, reasonable growth in the forecast period. As you can probably imagine, uh, bottled water will be a huge influencer in the PET bottles growth in the forecast period. Um, as you see, the product category is projected to grow by 6.6 .6 billion units uh, in the future period. In Latin America, this growth is attributable to different factors. Uh, so one, of course, is the shift to uh, healthier lifestyles uh, that many consumers are making. But another uh, important factor is the limited access to uh, clean tap water in many countries. So these together are driving growth in uh, bottled water consumption throughout Latin America. And then looking here at bottled water in a little bit more detail, uh, we see that PET bottled water accounted for over 4 billion units of growth, or will account for, excuse me. Uh, this is by far the most common pack type uh, in the category. Uh, additionally, bottled water is expected to grow um, by a 5% compound annual growth rate in the forecast period, uh, which will support sustained growth in PET bottles and some other pack types as well. Uh, glass bottles are seeing impressive growth rates uh, in the future period due to premium bottled waters uh, being popular in some key markets such as Brazil. In beauty and personal care, uh, we see some shifts in the relative share of pack types. Um, and metal aerosol cans will see impressive growth uh, in Latin America, bolstered by spray deodorants and sun care products. Additionally, plastic pouches will see uh, an impressive 13% growth rate driven by convenience and cost savings offered by this pack type. And finally, looking at home care, we see PET bottles uh, gaining relative share, uh, mostly at the expense of HDPE bottles. This is most evident in product categories uh, that include dishwashing and disinfectants. Uh, so PET bottles are expecting a 3% compound annual growth rate uh, compared to the 1% growth rate for HDPE. Plastic pouches will also do well in this category uh, due to their convenience and environmentally friendly image. Uh, and this slide simply indicates the importance of the key markets for packaging trends in the region. So obviously, Brazil and Mexico are significant due to the size of their populations. Uh, between these two markets, uh, metal beverage cans and PET bottles, respectively, uh, will have the highest growth rates um, among the larger packaging types. Next, we'll move along to Western Europe. The key trends in Western Europe include sustainable packaging, uh, a shift to smaller pack sizes driven more um, by manufacturers trying to reduce costs, uh, and smaller households in this case, um, compared to the portion control uh, and more health-focused um, driven smaller pack sizes in North America. And there is also an uh, increase in convenient packaging types uh, driven by the on-the-go lifestyles also uh, seen in Western Europe. Uh, 
Uh, so looking at the numbers for Western Europe uh, from a macro perspective, the total number of units sold uh, across the industries we researched was uh, seven, 705 uh, billion units. This number is expected to grow to 748 billion by 2020, uh, representing a 1.2% compound annual growth rate. Uh, minimizing environmental impact is an important issue uh, for consumers, as well as for retailers, producers, and packaging players uh, in Western Europe. This is creating growth in pack types that are easily recyclable, uh, such as stand-up pouches. Uh, and again, PET bottles will have the highest growth uh, among key categories, as will metal beverage cans, uh, which will be driven by some emerging markets, uh, including Turkey in this case. So bottled water, again, is seeing high growth. Uh, but diving into that number in a little bit more detail, uh, we see that functional bottled water will see a very impressive 27.4% uh, compound annual growth rate in the forecast period. Uh, in addition, ready-to-drink teas and energy drinks uh, are seeing impressive growth in percentage terms uh, due to product innovations and more diverse product offerings. Uh, so typically, what we see here is that Western Europe lags behind um, North America, specifically the United States, um, in product innovation. Um, and as we we're aware, the ready-to-drink tea category and energy drinks have seen uh, a lot of new product offerings uh, and different SKUs on, on shelves offering innovative products. Uh, so we see Western Europe moving in that direction as well. Now looking at food packaging specifically, uh, flexible plastic is expected to gain some share in the forecast period. Um, so this is again a case where uh, a single market drives significant growth. Um, so this is driven by Turkey, which of course has a large population when compared to other European markets, uh, and is also in some respects a developing country. Uh, so what we see here in Turkey uh, is more consumers moving to formal channels, uh, which is driving the uh, purchase of traditional consumer packaged goods uh, overall. And stand-up pouches are also doing well, uh, largely as a result of um, popular cheese products and also confectionery. In beverages, uh, PET bottles are uh, surprisingly growing in the beer category. Uh, this can especially be seen in Germany and Spain. Uh, so this is expecting a 6.5% compound annual growth rate. Um, this is due to increased interest for economy price beers, uh, again, in key consumer markets such as Germany and Spain. Uh, in addition, brick liquid cartons uh, are losing volume sales in juices as consumers perceive these products to be unhealthy uh, and are changing their consumption habits of this product. And this is also a trend that we see uh, in North America, that some consumers are moving away from juice products, uh, especially on the low end, uh, and in some cases are switching over to more uh, premium products within juice. In Western Europe, the distribution uh, among the key markets for packaging is a little bit more evenly distributed. Um, so the major three markets account for 52% of regional volume. Uh, those markets include Germany, uh, the United Kingdom, and France. Uh, so for each of them, we see uh, PET bottles to be the fastest growing uh, pack type. Um, 
and that is as a result of bottled water, carbonates, and uh, beer products as well, again, in Germany. I think also notable here in Germany is the decrease in um, the projected growth for glass bottles. As packagers switch from glass bottles to PET, uh, for example, within the beer category. Next, we'll move to Asia Pacific. And here we can see the uh, key trends uh, developing in Asia Pacific that are having an impact uh, on packaging. So looking at these uh, central themes, uh, packaging overall is seeing impressive growth due to improving economic conditions uh, driving growth for consumer products overall. Also, single-person households uh, impact the pack types available to consumers. Uh, so single-use, value, and convenient pack sizes are becoming uh, more popular as a result of the growing number of single-person households uh, in key Asia-Pacific markets such as China and Japan. Overall, Asia Pacific is the uh, largest region in total units sold. Uh, flexible packaging will continue to perform well, uh, especially in markets such as India, where manufacturers are moving away from glass and metal packaging uh, toward flexible packaging. Uh, in addition, environmentally friendly packaging will see more interest uh, from consumers. Uh, especially in markets such as China and Japan. Uh, and this trend will uh, impact consumer behavior more throughout the forecast period. Looking at the key product categories driving growth, uh, we obviously have uh, bottled water as a major influencer. Uh, however, yogurt and sour milk will see uh, impressive growth rates as it is expected to become a popular snacking op option in key markets, uh, again, due to its uh, healthy positioning. Now, looking specifically at food packaging, uh, and referring back to the growth in yogurt as a product category, um, shaped liquid cartons are projected to see 12.6% uh, uh, compound annual growth in the forecast period uh, due to the yogurt category again. Also, flexible plastics will uh, do well by offering small and affordable pack sizes to low-income low income consumers. Uh, specifically in savory snacks and confectionery products. And increasing incomes uh, are creating growth for bottled water, uh, energy drinks, and carbonates supporting uh, PET packaging overall in Asia Pacific. Also, growing coffee consumption uh, will create growth for flexible aluminum and plastic packaging, uh, which we see an example of here uh, in the second bullet. Uh, this pack type is expected to see a 7.3% CAGR uh, in the forecast period. Uh, specifically in China, uh, metal bottles will perform extremely well with an 8.4% uh, compound annual growth rate. Beer manufacturers use metal bottles to convey a premium positioning uh, in the Chinese market.
in Asia Pacific, the largest three markets account for 76% of the regional volume uh, in packaging units. And looking at India specifically, uh, we see some very impressive growth rates uh, as India is witnessing uh, strong economic growth uh, and they are also becoming more urbanized, which is increasing the consumption of packaged goods uh, while consumers move away from more traditional and informal channels uh, found in the rural areas throughout India. Now we'll touch briefly on Eastern Europe. Uh, so one of the key factors driving packaging trends in Eastern Europe uh, is the general weak economic performance uh, in many of the key markets. Um, so here the packaging manufacturers uh, and the product manufacturers are looking to reduce costs overall, um, which is driving higher growth in um, cheap packaging that will also allow for uh, more inex inexpensive transportation. So in Eastern Europe, uh, the overall macro number is 263 billion units sold uh, of the pack types we explored uh, in this study. Uh, this is expected to grow to 279 billion units at a growth rate of 1.2% uh, over the forecast period. And again, as I mentioned, there is a movement towards uh, cheaper packaging materials. Um, so this is seeing growth in uh, flexible plastic again, as a, con as a consequence of the challenging economic conditions uh, throughout Eastern Europe. Uh, in some markets, uh, most notably Poland, uh, ecological packaging is a growing trend um, driven by the middle class and urban consumers. And similar to uh, some of the trends seen in Latin America, for example, um, glass bottles is a favored pack type for more premium food and beverage. Uh, so this would be a factor for uh, bottled water as well as premium juices uh, in Eastern Europe. And here we're looking at some of the uh, key markets in Eastern Europe, uh, which account for 79% of total packaging in the region. Uh, and here we see that the market with the strongest uh, growth is Poland, which relatively has performed uh, more strongly economically compared to uh, some of its neighbors. And looking at PET bottles specifically within Poland, we see a 6% uh, projected growth rate in the forecast period uh, as a result of bottled water consumption, uh, carbonates, juices, and ready-to-drink teas. Finally, we will wrap up the regional analysis by looking briefly at the Middle East and Africa. Uh, so many of the economies in uh, the Middle East and Africa uh, are improving, which is changing uh, household lifestyles, supporting demand for packaged food overall. Uh, so similar to what I spoke about in India, uh, we have a lot of consumers uh, moving to more formal channels uh, and as a result, uh, consuming more traditional uh, packaged goods, especially packaged food and packaged beverage. Uh, and Middle East and Africa is the uh, smallest market in overall units sold, so 163 billion um, units sold in 2015, uh, but has the highest growth rate. Uh, so we have a 5.3% uh, CAGR projected uh, for the forecast period which will drive total units sold to $211 billion. And while overall packaging is increasing, uh, it's traditionally increasing in still more affordable um, pack types. So we see flexible plastic uh, will grow at uh, nearly 6% CAGR in the forecast period. Uh, and also, as in the, the other markets, PET bottles uh, will achieve a strong growth rate of 6.6% .6 uh, 
uh, adding nearly 10.5 billion units sold by 2020. And again, in this region as well, we see uh, the top markets really uh, dominate the regional volume. Uh, so we have Egypt, Saudi Arabia, uh, and South Africa um, really commanding a, a high percentage of the uh, regional share of packaging. And again, in all three markets, uh, PET bottles is one of the um, strongest growing pack, type, pack types. Um, specifically, the strongest growing pack type in South Africa at 7.2%. Uh, compound annual growth rate for the forecast period, uh, and in Egypt as well at 6.3%. Now we'll wrap up this afternoon's presentation with some of the uh, conclusions. Um, so overall, Asia Pacific is the region with the largest potential growth opportunity uh, within packaging. So again, the forecast growth in Asia Pacific uh, for packaging overall is 4.3%, which accounts for about 293 uh, additional units sold. Uh, PET bottles is the pack type uh, with the second largest total packaging growth in absolute terms. Um, so flexible packaging has the highest absolute growth. Uh, the forecast growth for PET bottles is 5% and projects to add about 66 uh, billion units in the forecast period. And driving down even further, uh, bottled water is the category with the largest packaging growth opportunity, uh, which expects a 7.5% uh, growth rate in the forecast period, 2015 to 2020, uh, and will account for 47 billion units of the uh, previously mentioned 66 billion units. Uh, added in PET. So this slide here looks at some of the uh, key product categories growing in each region. Um, so five out of the six we have bottled water. Uh, so Asia Pacific uh, adding 47 uh, billion units. In Western Europe, about 10 billion. North America, just over 10.5 billion units of bottled water in the forecast period. Uh, in Latin America, beer is actually the um, fastest growing in volume terms at 5.6 billion units. Uh, in Eastern Europe, again, we have bottled water at 2.3 billion units. And finally, 6 billion units uh, in Middle East and Africa. Here again, we have some of the um, regional stats. Uh, so the um, highest growing in volume terms uh, pack types. So Asia Pacific, again, uh, flexible plastic is the highest growing absolute volume uh, pack type, followed by PET bottles uh, and then glass bottles. In Western Europe, uh, flexible plastic is also the highest growing uh, pack type in volume terms, followed by PET bottles and thin wall plastic containers. Uh, in North America, we have PET bottles, uh, glass bottles, and flexible plastic. In Latin America, PET, uh, flexible plastic, and glass bottles are the leading pack types. Eastern Europe, PET bottles, thin wall plastic containers, glass bottles, and then finally in Middle East and Africa, uh, flexible plastic, followed by PET bottles, and then thin-walled plastic containers. And that concludes the, uh, the presentation for, for this afternoon. So I thank you all for, for your attention. Um, this is my contact information. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out uh, to my email. Um, and thank you all for your time. Uh, and to uh, bring this up, there is a more comprehensive report available uh, from PMMI uh, if you're interested in looking at that as well. So thank you so much.
Gordon, thank you. That's some great information you had on this report. Um, just to touch back on a few things that you mentioned, mentioned at the beginning, some of the key trends are the, the greater consumer awareness of health and wellness, which is really driving some of this information forward, stronger influence of recycling and environmental issues in, in the mature markets, and the macroeconomic trends that are impacting packaging and developed and developing markets. So those are just some of the key trends that affect all of these markets and all of these regions for all of the data that you've just seen. So we have had a couple questions. One of them um, is, it, in a couple places within your presentation, you mentioned formal channels. What is, what is the definition of that? What are you referring to when you say formal channels? Yeah, so here in the U.S., um, that would refer to your traditional like grocery, supermarket, uh, hypermarket, mass merchandiser, uh, convenience, just more traditional uh, formal channels as we know them in developed markets. Uh, and many of the developing markets, um, people, individuals, just specifically in rural communities, uh, purchase their food and beverage products uh, in, from an informal store. So it could be um, you know, someone selling food at the side of the road, or you know, milk, dairy is a very big informal kind of product. Uh, in many of these markets. So they will so sell um, dairy products in bags, for example. Uh, but as consumers are increasing their disposable income, uh, becoming more urbanized, they would go um, to the formal channel, which I would consider the, the grocery and the um, convenience. Okay. That's great. Thank you. That helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, as Gordon mentioned, this report is available on PMMI.org slash research, so please be sure to go on our website and download that report. Um, we are in the process of finalizing the redesign of the website, so if you go on and you have an issue downloading the report, please email Rebecca Marquis at PMMI.org or myself at pfeldman at PMMI.org, and we'll make sure you get the information immediately. We also have um, a few reports that are coming out uh, soon. One is on automation, which is top of mind um, from several members. And it's a, definitely a report that's going to talk about the evolution of automation, what's going on, what's in the future, and how you can act upon it. Uh, and moving forward towards the, the rest of the year, we'll have a state of the industry report on packaging, a state of the industry on processing for food and beverage. We'll also have a beverage industry report and a snack food industry report. So there's a lot of information along with all of our quarterly economic reports that we do. So please be sure to visit pmmi.org slash research. Again, Gordon, thank you so much. Great presentation. If anyone has any questions after the webinar is over, please do not hesitate to email me. I'd be happy to either answer your questions or chat with Gordon and get the answers right to you. So as a final note, you will receive an email today to complete an evaluation for the webinar. Please, it's only going to take you one to two seconds. Please fill it out. Just let it know how we're doing, how you use the information, was it actionable, and is there another topic that you'd like to have discussed? Uh, this just helps us move forward with our research. So Gordon, thank you again. Okay. Thank you so much. Enjoy the thank rest you, of your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.